Good morning, I'm Ernie Bauer with the CSIS Southeast Asia Program, and we're honored to be here this morning with Ambassador Winston Thompson, the Ambassador of Fiji to the United States. Good morning, Ambassador. The New Year's Day uh, declaration by the Commodore of uh, the end of emergency rule in Fiji has, uh, has put a lot of questions in people's minds about where Fiji is headed. Uh, in terms of elect possible elections, uh, return to a uh, democratic process. Could you tell us a little bit about what's happening there uh, with, with regard to the emergency rule? Well, the removal, which actually is taking place today in Fiji, being Saturday there, uh, was set out in the, uh, in the plan and the roadmap that the Prime Minister Bainimarama announced in July of 2009. <coughs> whereby over the period until September of 2014, when elections would take place, there was various things that were supposed to happen. In the first three years was to be social economic development, a modification in the legal system, updating of the legal system, because many of our laws go back to even before our independence in 1970. So mm -hmm. a lot of this, particularly the, 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 the terrorism that has arisen over the last uh, decade or so has become much more significant. So those things had to be done. And then the constitution was to be reviewed, uh, and then elections to take place in 2014. So the removal of the public emergency regulations today is merely the next step in that process. So this has been followed all along. We're quite uh, mm. following the plan that was set out. So it sounds like you're quite confident that, uh, that the next step is, the, is the, to revise the constitution, and, and you think you're on track for elections in 2014. Yeah, very much so, because the... Uh, the setting up of the committee, the, the structure to carry out that review is going to be announced uh, next month, and this will take place throughout this year, uh, completed next year, and under that uh, new constitution, elections would then be held in 2014. Could you address uh, what changes uh, the government plans to make in the constitution? What areas of the constitution would be updated and, and changed? Well, mainly in the area of representation, because the Constitution we have, which was brought in in 1997, was based on the 1990 Constitution, our Independence Constitution, and that took into account the, uh, <clears throat> the historical background, colonial background that we had, where we had two large components in our population, roughly half. Mm. And so provisions were put into the Constitution to recognize that uh, division, dichotomy, but that, in fact, is what has caused the continuing tensions, and this is what is to be removed. So that the intention in the new constitution is to remove any racial reference out of it. So that it becomes a non-racial constitution. Everybody is equal. Everybody's vote and value is equal. So one man, one vote, yeah. no matter who you are. Right. And uh, what, uh, what ti what's the timing for the elections in 2014? September. September 2014. What are the prospects for genuine reconciliation between the you know the the parties in, in Fiji I mean, you're talking about a political process but on the ground uh, how do you see that reconciliation process well, on the ground there's always been good relations between all the communities mm. um, but the fact that the Constitution entrenches the recognition of communal separation is what we th what the government feels is the cause of the problem so the intention in the revision of the constitution is to remove that so that at least everyone is, uh, there is one name for everyone, which there wasn't before. And there is hopefully a sense of unity that could be generated because of that. Hillary Clinton and uh, in particular Kurt Campbell, uh, the Assistant Secretary of State for East Asia and the Pacific, have talked about the need for the United States to uh, refocus uh, on Asia in general, and they've talked a lot about this, the Pacific, uh, also being more, the United States being more active in the Pacific. What's Fiji's perspective on, on that? Would, should the United States be more active in the Pacific? What can we do? And, and, and could you talk a little bit about um, other countries, or, or other nations, uh, China, uh, India, the Southeast Asians, are they being more active in, in, in the Pacific also? Well, America has always been in the Pacific, as far as we're concerned. We have a large uh, <coughs> uh, Peace Corps contingent in Fiji. They've been there since 1968, except for a short period when they, uh, when they weren't there. And they have a big uh, diplomatic presence in Suva, because that is the sort of center of that part of the region. So now part of the Pacific, the Americans have always been there, but in many ways they've left it to Australia mm. and New Zealand to sort of look after 
the broad interests of, of that alliance. And uh, we feel certainly that uh, the way Australia has been managing it has not been the best way to deal with the situation we have in Fiji. Sure, they have problems with how, what happened, but uh, really the way they've addressed it has not, uh, not helped. They haven't changed anything in the timetable that is set out for return to, uh, to elections. And in fact, they've, uh, they've probably made things worse rather than better. So very diplomatically, I think I heard you just say that if the United States uh, wants to uh, be more active, we should engage directly and not through uh, sort of proxy relationships with uh, the Kiwis and the, and the Australians. Is that right? We think so. What's the state of Fiji's economy? Uh, what does it look like? Uh, what, are the, what are the prospects for the economy and, and what do you see in the future? Well, we're a small, <clears throat> very small open economy. Uh, we rely on trade, import and export trade. Uh, we don't have any serious restrictions in that. We're a member of the WTO. Mm -hmm. And over the period since uh, 2006, uh, we could have done better economically. Our GDP growth has only been uh, uh, very low in the low figures, uh, but that's probably a par for the rest, much of the rest of the world anyway. So. We've all been suffering. Yeah. Yeah. We could have done better. And hope if, if we had not had sanctions imposed on us by, uh, by some countries, uh, we probably would have done better. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, observers say that China has stepped up its game in the Pacific and that this is a reason that the United States should, should also you know, re, uh, refocus. Um, is that true? I mean, would you say that you've seen China uh, more proactive over the last decade in Fiji? Uh, not any more than they have been. They've been there since independence, in fact, since before independence. Okay. And they've been a, a, a continuous uh, partner over the years. I think uh, if there's been any stepping up over the last few years, it's because other partners have fallen off. I see. That, uh, that they have come in, because Fiji has had to refocus its, uh, its engagements uh, and its partners over the last uh, seven or eight years mm. in order to maintain its uh, economic momentum. And China has been very much, uh, not very much there. Last year in the Pacific Island Forum, uh, I think it was held in uh, New Zealand, mm -hmm. The Americans had the largest ever and most senior delegation there. And I think the Pacific Island Forum, the PIF, has its secretariat in Fiji. Have you been able to participate fully in the PIF uh, with, the, with the sanctions regime that exists? And what's Fiji's perspective on, on the PIF and, and, and what do you see going forward? Well, Fiji is, <coughs> uh, has been suspended from its membership of the, of the Pacific Islands Forum and it's a bit uh, sort of... Uh, uh, in Congress, that uh, the headquarters is based <laughs> right. in uh, in Fiji, right. but uh, they have been allowed to operate uh, quite normally. I don't think there's been any restrictions imposed upon them. They're quite free to, to come and go and to operate uh, because Fiji will resume its uh, membership uh, in due course. So you know things will move. But in the meantime, Fiji's had to, for instance, work through its uh, association with other Pacific islands other than Australia and New Zealand in what has become known as the Pacific Small Island Developing States. Right. And they caucus as a group, for instance, uh, 12 of them at the United Nations. And they've become uh, a reasonably uh, vocal and visible uh, lobby group within that uh, context. And Fiji is very much a part of that. Mm. If you were uh, uh, out on the back porch uh, and in Hawaii with President Obama and he asked you, uh, Ambassador, you know, what are, the, what are the things that we should be doing with Fiji that we're not doing today as the United States? What would, what would be your, uh, your top line advice to the President? I think it's mainly to, uh, to advise or, or encourage its, uh, its partners in our part of the world to look at things a bit more long term rather than just uh, being focused on some of the things that already appear not to have been a very uh, productive way of doing things. Ambassador, thank you for joining us at CSIS today for a session of the dialogue. I hope you'll come back soon.